Good morning, hacksters. Today in the studio, we have another unboxing for you, or un un enveloping. Uh, so previously on the show, we talked about this, the AnyBeam projector for Raspberry Pi, uh, made by Nebra, and it is sold through Pi Supply, but was originally funded through a Kickstarter. Uh, it's a laser, a pocket laser projector that works with your Raspberry Pi. So this is the one that we're going to be looking at today, and the one that we previously look looked at was the uh, full projector in your pocket kind of uh, experience that's powered off of five volts, takes any HDMI source and uh, has very little need to focus since it is made with lasers. <laughs> it's driven by micro, me micro electrical mechanical systems, MEMS uh, components. So it's um, very small and also it's very quiet. It has no need for a fan. So it, it is whisper soft and any fan noise that you hear right now is actually coming from my computer, <laughs> which does not have as many bonuses. Uh, I thought I would actually hook it up for you and we're a little bit tilty, but let me show you. This is the previous model that we looked at. This is the projector that is standalone. I've got a little tripod mounted on here because it has your quarter 20 standard camera uh, threading so that you can put a little tripod on there. And then uh, HDMI in and a strong five volt source with a couple of amps available. So I've been playing around with Sonic Pi on the Raspberry Pi. So this is actually coming from my Pi 400, which I have hooked up on my desk. And uh, you know we're getting some striping because camera and projector and whatever, but uh, I can assure you this is a very nice rock solid image and it's totally in focus here. I can read C major equals scale, C2 major, num octaves of five, da 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 da, welcome friend. Uh, it's all very clear and if I project it on the ceiling up there, it's still super clear because of it's being driven by lasers. So I wanted to take uh, out of the envelope the uh, Pi Hat version of this which I've got pulled up here and linked in the description as always. Uh, here we go. Uh, so this, rather than being a self-contained unit, uh, this in the Kickstarter, it ran for about 30 pounds less. You could get the uh, AnyBeam hat for 199 pounds, or you could get the uh, AnyBeam unit that we just looked at for 229. And now on uh, on Pi Supply, it is also going for 199 pounds. So check that out. Uh, let's get this out of the envelope. It'll be great. I like looking at new stuff, especially. So here's here's the old one. A little closer view. The image is coming out of here, and you've got your little indicators for power and HDMI. And then also, uh, I want to note that it works with any HDMI source. We have tried it with a Chromecast and stuff like that. Very good. All right, but for people who want to do more hardware hacking, <laughs> with a, like, for example, say that you want to make a self-contained piece of public art or other installation or something in your backyard where you can show off your Raspberry Pi creations to people, uh, especially right now when we have trouble being inside with strangers. Um, this is designed... Ooh, look at it. This is designed for that kind of system. You can have it all in one unit. So the one drawback that I see... Oh, it came with a ton of stickers also. Wow! Nebra, any beam. Wow, I have no idea when I would want to use this many stickers, but cool! <laughs> um, let's see if we can get that glare reduced a little bit. Do do do. Mm -hmm. Magic zoom and tilt. Okay, so here we are. Yeah. So compared to the previous version, where you would have to have your Pi and then your uh, projector as separate units, this one you could mount them all in a single container. Uh, much more easily, and you'd be able to power them both off of the same source, perhaps. Uh, just use a very high amperage power source. Uh, let's get this open. I really like the packaging on here, actually. Woo! The world's smallest cinema pocket pr pocket cinema projector. 
uh, compatible with da -da -da, all these Raspberry Pis and any Raspberry Pi with 40 GPIO pins. So that's the, really the short version of this. Any Raspberry Pi that has that standard 40 pin GPIO connector and maybe even other ones that have the same connector such as, um, oh, what was it? The Atmega Zero has a 40 pin connector. I kind of doubt you could run a projector off of that, but we would, you know, who knows? Uh, the world's smallest pocket cinema projector with the power to project a crystal clear picture onto any surface, anywhere, anytime. I mean, any surface is a bit of a misnomer, but whatever. Uh, low power, focus free, because the laser beam is collimated light so that it, you know, doesn't really get out of focus as you would with something that's just going through a lens. No bulb uses a MEMS scanner, which means no bulb is required. Basically, you have three lasers in here. Three tiny little diode lasers, I think they are. Uh, and so you have a red, a green, and a blue one. And then there's little mirrors that uh, direct the light around. And it's scanning across the entire screen. And the persistence of vision effect means that you sh see the whole screen. Uh, even though it's actually only a, like a single dot is illuminated at a time, which is kind of amazing. It does this at 60 hertz, so it's imaging the entire screen 60 times per second. Isn't that ludicrous? Uh, project a 720p HD picture at 60 hertz by reflecting the three. Oh, it, that's exactly what I was just saying. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that cool, though? You've just got three little lasers, a mirror that's like zooming around. It's just like wobbling to... Uh, yeah, to, to direct these little lasers around. It's so cool. And that's why, of course, when you have a uh, scanning laser and a camera, which is may also have a rolling shutter, you're going to get uh, artifacts like that striping that we saw earlier when I was projecting on the wall. That's because of frequency uh, interaction between your projector and your camera. Okay, on to the exciting part. <laughs> it's a hat, how do you wear it? <laughs> so, uh, as you may know, hat is a uh, word for, it's basically equivalent to a shield for Arduino or a uh, cape for BeagleBone. So it just means something that goes on top of your pie and enables you to connect it together. Uh, there's also smaller versions of hats, which can be called bonnets, or uh, there was another one, but I forget what it was. What is this one? The fan shim. <laughs> Something about hardware in the middle, sticking hardware in the middle, <laughs> which is like a super, super tiny hat. Look at that. It goes there. Anyway, so this one probably takes up the full 40 pin connector is what I'm guessing because it mounts directly on top here. Open here, very helpful. Ooh. Stop showing that now. <laughs> yes, it's the same process that CRT TVs were using, scanning line by line. Cathode ray tubes actually guided a array of cathodes. Wait, no, the cathode is actually one of the contacts, but yeah, CRTs worked very similarly. I don't know why I'm using the past tense there. CRTs still exist. <laughs> uh, there's a really interesting tangent you can go on if you're curious about how the uh, Duck Hunt Zapper gun, Nintendo Zapper worked, uh, that sort of relates to this as well. Okay, so we've got a bunch of stuff in here. I'm kind of surprised. Oh, look, we've got this whole assembly guide. Beautiful. Accessories included, package contents, LSP module. I'm guessing that's laser something projector, adapter board, uh, control board, base plate, FPC. It's probably your little ribbon connector. You've got little uh, spacers, standoffs, and um, machine screws to connect it. Assembly guide. Insert the uh, camera ribbon cable to the LS a flexible something cable <laughs> to the LSP module connector and lock the actuator. Oh, I love these things. I have a secret pleasure of, uh, I really enjoy putting together these little locking ribbon cable connectors. So here we have, this is the laser module. Look, that's probably where it comes out. I could be lying. Don't take that for granted. <laughs> right there. Giant heat sink. Whoa! Cool. Here's our little ribbon connector.
This guy is the control board. Oh, look, you've got GPIO. What does a GPIO button do? Uh, we've got one that says power, or no, enter. Uh, and then presumably up and down. So the previous one, um, yeah, up and down. They've got little labels. The previous one I've got over here has some controls on it. You could plug in a hard drive over here and you've got this little uh, left, right click connector with the same controls on it, arrow, arrow, enter. So presumably that's very similar. So you got your control board, your laser board, some kind of a backing thingamajig with uh, threaded areas for your screws and standoffs. And then we have this other guy, which actually connects to your Raspberry Pi. I'm going to try and put this together really quick. I've got about 10 minutes uh, before I have to jump off here. So, wait, where's our ribbon cable? I don't actually see that. It must be in the box still. I saw a silica gel packet, but that's not it. Was it supposed to go here, maybe? Oh, no! Hmm. I'll have to scroll back in the video later on and see if I can find it, because right now I cannot. So maybe we won't be putting this together right now, but let's go through the parts. LSP module. Whoop. Adapter board. Adapting it to the Pi. Control board. And base plate plus that connector. We see slots for the ribbons to go through, the ribbon cable to go through in all of those. So first you're going to connect it to uh, like so. Okay. And then uh, these connectors I really love. Let me see if I can show you. I might need a, a utensil here. I'm going to get a little bit closer up. So this little flippy guy here uh, is what enables you to lock the cable into place. It's sort of, uh, this is the open position, so it's up. And then if you push it down very carefully, uh, you insert your cable over here, push it down, and then it clamps down onto your cable. And that is a really nice little kind of connector. It is kind of easy to break, so uh, once you put this together, you would probably want to keep it together and not be messing around disconnecting it. Uh, but the nice thing about this system is that this just connects to the carrier board, adapter board, and that sticks onto your Raspberry Pi. So if you need to move it from Pi to Pi or whatever, then you don't have to disrupt that cable, which is very nice. All right, uh, I'm going to go look around and see if I can find that ribbon cable or one that might be compatible. It seems to just be like a regular ribbon cable. Um, so I might have something around that would work. And hopefully we'll have something uh, more to show you soon. But in the meantime, yeah, again, uh, this projector is super great um, from where I've used it in the past, just with the standalone one. Works really nicely. It's super bright. Obviously, uh, you want to have a good power source for it. That's really important. But I've actually been able to run it off of a uh, pocket battery with a few amps of uh, available current. How many amps does it consume? I'm not sure exactly. Let's take another look at the website and see if we can see that really quick. Is there like a recommended amperage of power supply? Specifications, 720p resolution, 60 frames per second. Contrast is 80,000 to one. Ratio is 16 to nine, so a sort of a widescreen. 23 ANSI lumens, equivalent to DLP 130 visual lumens. 150 inch screen size, so probably uh, that's probably like the maximum to have it still be bright. You're uh, not going to lose a lot of focus over distance, but what will happen is that you know the beam spreads out uh, in a sort of guided way, and so the more broadly it's spread out, the dimmer any particular area is going to be. 
Uh, da -da -da. Then we have operating temperature, 5 degrees to 35 degrees Celsius, so 41 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Maybe don't take this on your snow camping trip and use it to project uh, a Star Trek episode, for example, uh, in the middle of the winter, but <laughs> you could uh, otherwise use it in a broad variety of environments. Maybe not for your summer drive-in theater either, if it gets above 100 Fahrenheit. We don't have information on how many amps it wants, but let me see. Does it have a separate power input? It does. It has a uh, micro USB input. So what I would do with this one is I would be sure to connect a separate uh, micro USB power input. I'm assuming that's what this is for, uh, but we can take a look later. I'll probably do a getting started with this. It'd be kind of a cool thing to have on a robot, honestly. Like if you uh, wanted to make a telepresence robot, you could have it roll around and have a camera on the front uh, because that, for uh, many pies, they have their own camera connector that's separate from the 40 pin connector. Uh, and then you could connect the uh, projector on there and then you'd just be able to like project it whatever wall while your camera looks at the person and you'd be able to like have your I am the Wizard of Oz moment. Uh, looking down on them from your giant 150 inch projected image on the wall, which I think would be really fun for a telepresence robot, but uh, yeah. Ah, apparently the ribbon cable was missing. It's not just an Alex moment. All right, well, uh, we will see what we can do to find one of those because I think it'd be a really cool project. Uh, that is the Nebra Anybeam Pie Hat. Go check it out on Pi Supply. Make sure they give you a cable. <laughs> and uh, we will see you soon. Hack on.